hello everyone welcome to the next part of uh, the concluding lecture now we will talk about all the tools and methods that we have uh, discussed and try to see the interconnection between them the similarities and dissimilarities and try to reason out for the uh, same so let's start with our methodology the msds methodology on which we spend a considerable amount of uh, time so this particular methodology the objects or objectives of it is to analyze the existing system and do an assessment then set the sustainability priority in the context of the above analysis then generate a sustainability focused idea for spss and checking or visualizing the sustainability improvement or worsening of developed concept as compared to the existing system so this particular methodology helps us to design sustainable product service systems it also uh, is a modular way of uh, uh, designing for system design for sustainability where all can we use this particular methodology this methodology has a very very wide implication but the methodology has been designed specifically keeping in mind that we want to uh, design for say uh, products for companies products for ngos products for product service systems for ngos companies government organizations and any such organizations so this particular tool is helpful when you are want to do an spss in the context when your pss is product oriented pss result oriented pss or so let's come to the stages of this particular msds methodology so the stages involve strategic analysis where we try to understand the existing scenario come up with what should be the design intervention context then we get into exploring new opportunities so these opportunities are nothing but ideas and cluster of ideas these ideas are supposed to be system oriented ideas or service oriented ideas which help to achieve the sustainability target or achieve the design solutions which has been envisioned in the first step that is the strategic analysis step once we are done with exploring opportunities we get into design of the system concepts how do we do that we cluster some of the ideas that we have generated in the exploration phase and we build them up into system concepts we might come up with more than one system concepts then we will do an assessment of all those system concepts in terms of sustainability the degree of sustainability that they offer on all the three dimensions as well as their feasibility in terms of technology as well as the time frame or resources available once we have selected one of the concepts then we go ahead with system detail design in the system detail design phase we try to uh, detail uh, the uh, whole uh, system concept that we have developed in a manner that anybody who picks up my report now can implement my idea in practice and finally the step uh, of our communication comes where we need to communicate with all stakeholders involved or other parties who might be interested in knowing about our project all the sustainability improvements that we have made how we have done it and so on so this particular methodology in the phase 1 strategic analysis we can have two different kinds of context depending on the context we approach the strategic analysis little differently in the first context when a promoter or stakeholder is the main driver of the project that is there is one uh, promoter or a couple of promoters or one stakeholder one main stakeholder or couple of stakeholders who together are the main drivers of the project and most likely they know about the concept of product service system design and they have approached you to give um, a sustainable pss design solution whereas the second context is some 
nothing which we call as a socio economic ecosystem which we define as a ecosystem wherein the economic activities of the um, uh, ecosystem are deeply ingrained in their social ways of living say for example the handloom sector in our country or the craft sector here you cannot find one stake stakeholder who is a primary stakeholder these are multi stakeholder systems in these contexts also there is hardly times when somebody approaches you that i want to make this kind of a sbss uh, related intervention and because there might be too many craftsmen too many small companies involved in doing craft activities or handloom related activities so it's very difficult to identify who is my primary stakeholder so in this particular context uh, we do the strategic analysis little differently as compared to the previous one so in the major difference that comes in is in the first context because we know who all are the stakeholders so we can directly talk to the stakeholder understand the stakeholder their position what do they want and define the context intervention context we can very easily identify who are their competitors what is their market position but in the second context the major challenge appears in first trying to identify who all actually are the stakeholders so the very first step comes in to picture in the second context is try to identify who all are the actors so like we saw in the swalkuchi example we had to first try to find okay who all are the actors so we figured out the weavers the different types of weavers different types of entrepreneurs the helpers the uh, people who set up the loom and an entire range of actors who are involved once we have identified all the actors we have identified their role what is their contribution what are their problems what are the sustainability issues and very importantly what are the infrastructure related uh, uh, constraints once we have done the same we then go ahead with defining the intervention context along with the stakeholders apart from that all other stages of the msds for both the contexts can be almost carried similarly the methodology is also very modular in structure which means you have those five more procedural stages that we discuss the strategic analysis exploring opportunities system concept design and then detailing and finally communication either you can do all the stages or you can mm, uh, select certain stages and it will depend on the context that uh, you are taking into consideration as well as the amount of resources that you have also the tool comes up with certain kinds of tools that we had discussed you can select uh, to you can opt to uh, go ahead with all the tools but that requires a lot of time you can also select some of the tools which are more applicable for your context and you can also bring in new tools depending on the context you might feel that in this context some other tool which has not specifically been designed for the msds methodology you can also bring those tools in this particular methodology and hence this whole philosophy that it is modular structure the third level of modularity that this uh, msds methodology offers is although it considers all the three dimensions along with many sub dimensions it allows you to give different priority levels to each one of them so if we look at all the sub dimensions so say for example in system eco efficiency which is dimension 1 it consists of sub dimensions like system life optimization transportation distribution reduction resource reduction waste minimization valorization conservation biocompatibility and toxicity reduction you uh, are given this possibility to associate different levels of priority to each of these in the sub dimensions depending on the context for which you are designing so that's the third uh, modularity aspect which is offered by this particular tool so because it consists of all the three dimensions so we have the next dimension the social equity and cohesion 
which consists of improve employment working conditions improve equity and justice in relation to stakeholders enable a responsible sustainable consumption favor or integrate the weaker and marginalized and improve social cohesion and empower or enhance local resources then the third dimension which is the economic sustainability so how is the market position and competitiveness profitability or added value for company for customers long term business development risk partnership and cooperation and macroeconomic effects we also discuss the sdo toolkit which is a very important toolkit and it helps you to first mm, assess the mm, priority level of each of those sub dimensions then it also helps you to assess the mm, current status of existing best sustainable cases if any in your context on the same three dimensions then it helps you to ideate on system level concepts and service level concepts it's very important to remember that the msds methodology is a toolkit which is meant for making system level interventions so that you can create a sustainable psl system because the whole and the basics of a sustainable psl system is that it is in the economic interest of the providers to be sustainable on all the three dimensions so in this particular toolkit it helps you to come up with system driven ideas as well as service driven ideas then you can do a comparison this is a qualitative comparison that i do so once i have made all the design changes so in this particular context i this is the ideation board once the ideation board is done you will do the system concept design then you will select one concept out of all the concepts that you have come up with then you will do the detailing of the design once the detailing of the design is done you can do a final assessment of the new design with respect to the existing scenario so you the sdo toolkit helps you to do a qualitative judgment of the environmental dimension the socio ethical dimension and the economic dimension with respect to all its sub dimensions but be very careful this is again a qualitative judgment say for example where you have to be very careful is say in this dimension waste minimization or valorization are priority so say for example i replaced all my parts of my product component in which plastic was being used and in place of plastic i am using wood now plastic it can go into a landfill or it has to be incinerated or it might be downgraded but with wood we do not have much problem it can actually go for composting so by considering that i might say okay i have achieved waste minimization to certain extent in my new concept so i would say that my concept is having a incremental improvement but that is a very very no qualitative judgment so if you recall our life cycle assessment lectures you will remember that we had always criticized this kind of a qualitative judgment because not necessarily the qualitative judgment is the right judgment why so because there are many other aspects say for example the life of the product maybe the plastic was offering long, longer life than wood or say for example how the wood is transported from point a to point b or how the plastic is transported from point a to point b or maybe what is the impact on the overall weight of the new product because i changed all plastic parts to wooden parts so there can be many so many other considerations so we actually need to compute it quantitatively unfortunately doing the quantitative calculation for life cycle assessment is way much more difficult 
way much more complicated. Doing a qualitative assessment over here is way much more easier. Also, the quantitative um, assessment using LCA is more time consuming. You might not have data for all the processes for all the materials involved. You also have to be very meticulous in terms of the exact quantity. So, I am going to use 100 kilojoule of energy. I should also know the energy mix of that particular um, location where I am going to um, put it in. So, because of all the complications involved, there are many a times that these complications, the time required, the resources required, non-availability of all uh, uh, data, which makes life cycle assessment a more difficult approach. Whereas, the qualitative uh, judgment is a easier approach. So, of course, you cannot just on the basis of like replacing wood, you cannot only put like I have done a radical improvement. Hence, in case it is uh, possible, always go ahead with a life cycle assessment because that gives you the best uh, possible answer on whether the situation has worsened or it has improved on the environmental dimension. Otherwise, if though that is not a possibility, still you should always go ahead doing this qualitative analysis. It is better that uh, the qualitative analysis be done with all the stakeholders. The mm, All the stakeholders can bring in better judgment possibly mm, as compared to being done by one person. So, if you are supposed to do a life cycle assessment of the same uh, new mm, product service system design that you have done, you can identify, you can put it into the mm, stages of mm, the life cycle assessment, try to identify all the inputs and all the outputs. So, mm, the steps that you will perform for doing the LCA will be, first you establish the scope and goal of your analysis. Then you establish the system, the functional unit and the system boundaries. Then you quantify all the materials, so what in terms of weight, how much energy you are going to use, how much distance you are going to uh, travel and so on in your system. Then you enter the data into a computer program and you interpret the results and draw your conclusions. So, uh, step 4 will of course give you a quantitative amount, say so many kgs of CO2 equivalent or so much of eco cost. But that value as such does not make much sense. The sense is made only when you interpret the results and draw your conclusions. In order to do that, you will compare the existing situation which means you have to do a life cycle assessment of the existing situation as well as the life cycle assessment of your final situation. And then with the mm, quantitative values that you have generated, you can be more sure about the environmental improvement brought in. For the social and the economic uh, dimension, the radar diagram, the qualitative diagram works quite good. In while we were discussing the life cycle assessment, we also discussed that we might have two types of scenarios in designing of new product systems and while we are reporting. Say for example, with your new design, you want to Mm, go for certain kind of mm, certification. Then in that or you want to put it into the CSR report or anything of that sort. So, in that case reporting is important. So, you will have these two different contexts designing of new product system and in reporting. In doing these uh, two different processes, we have our steps little bit different. So, step B and C are mm, so, the reason for bottoms up approach, designers become aware of the problem to be solved by thinking about the system. Hence, steps B and C are concluding this process of thinking about the system in step A. So, when you are in the design phase, so when you are in the design phase, your step A is describe the system with the system boundaries. Then you define the functional unit and then you define the goal and scope of the study. Because when nothing exists before you, you do not have a design, you do not, mm, you cannot start with the goal and scope. Hence, we start with 
describing our system and the system boundaries and then go to define the functional unit and finally define the goal and scope of the study but while you are reporting it when you already know that this is my final design your approach becomes the reverse it is like define the goal and scope of the study then you define the functional unit and then you describe the system with the system boundaries another approach that can be taken say for example in the uh, if you are into a design context by using the msts methodology where design of the product is also an um, aspect of your design as you saw the msts methodology it helps you to design the whole focus is on system design and service design but in order to um, improve the product aspect of it on of it on uh, the environmental dimension at the time when you are doing msds methodology for the design of the new um, uh, pss you can also use the ics toolkit for the product part of it so the ics toolkit is a uh, life cycle design strategies so although the uh, lca methodology the um, lca assessment is more quantitative and difficult to um, do and requires resources using the ics toolkit is way much more easier because again it is not a quantitative tool but it's a qualitative tool and it helps you to design so by using certain engineering design criteria and guidelines so there are step by step guidelines in this particular ics toolkit which help you in minimizing material consumption in minimizing energy consumption in minimizing toxic emissions in uh, use of renewable and biocompatible resources optimization of product lifespan improve the lifespan of materials and finally design for disassembly and the ics toolkit also offers you a kind of a radar diagram uh, concept where you can qualitatively judge either you can judge on an overall level or at a way much more granulated level qualitatively whether you have been able to bring in uh, environmental uh, greater environmental sustainability in your product so this is the approach by which you can combine the msds toolkit along with the ics toolkit and it's always a best way that at the end of it you do a life cycle assessment as well you can also keep on doing the life cycle assessment when you are at the system concept design level so you came up with five different concepts you can also do a life cycle assessment of the five different concepts in case time is permitted once you do these things you can ensure the higher and higher sustainability of your system design so the combination of the three tools the sdo toolkit the life cycle assessment and the ics toolkit uh, based assessment and they will be also used for so they can be used all these three tools can be used for design as well as for assessment so all of these three if it can be used together in the context of a product service system design you can get a, mm, a very robust sustainable solution so when we were talking about the msds methodology we were concentrating on all the three dimensions of sustainability and our focus was on a product service system design which is sustainable which has inherent sustainable capabilities why the inherent sustainable capabilities because it's in the economic interest of the providers to be sustainable now if we try to look this sustainable pss in terms of different kinds of economies what it is so there are three types of economies centralized economy decentralized economy and distributed economy in the context of centralized economy i have one most important hub so i have one most important hub say for example thermal power plant generation it's a centralized way of producing mm, energy and then the energy is distributed to all over the place i can have decentralized way of doing activity 
say for example amul has a decentralized model where there are different people who are producing the milk and they bring it together to certain collection centers from where it is sent to more centralized collection centers in distributed model say for example there are so each of these unit is a biogas mm, uh, unit so each and every household owns a biogas mm, uh, plant so the household waste is pumped into the biogas plant and the biogas plant mm, supplies mm, fuel the biogas to the mm, kitchens of these households and all of them are connected to each other so i can share the raw material so if there is excess raw material produced in one location say one of these locations is a restaurant so the chances that there will be excessive waste over there is way much more higher but also the chances that their usage is also way much higher is quite higher so as a result because of this network structure the inputs and outputs can be more balanced all the excesses can be more balanced so in this case each and every node is a producer and a consumer so this is a um, approach for a distributed economy so now we can apply our sustainable product service system to each one of these economies say in the context of centralized economy if we apply a sustainable product service system design say for example the example of fresh water company that we were discussing who will supply water purifiers to everybody's homes by following a spss model so in that case this fresh as a company is a centralized is operating under the centralized model they own they have the their product and they distribute their products to different people so that's a centralized way of doing activities and your spss is applied to this centralized economy similarly i can apply spss to a decentralized economy as well and a distributed economy say for example if we want to have solar power generation so if you remember the um, example of m power that we gave anybody who is interested in having electricity in their home because the rural areas in that area were not connected to the main grid so anybody who was interested in getting solar power energy could uh, contact empower and empower would come and put in a solar panel in each and every house but the solar panels were not connected so one house was not connected to another uh, solar house one house uh, if say excess production of energy is happening in a house that is also not connected to the centralized grid so what i am doing is i am doing production of mm, energy in this particular context in a distributed manner also the consumption is happening in a distributed manner so in that particular context i am bring and this is also pss model because the mm, owners of those uh, mm, na households who are using the empower units they do not own the empower unit the solar panel the batteries the mm, lights mm, the charging and all other fixtures they are owned by mm, the company empower and the consumer pays mm, per unit of consumption so it is a result oriented pss so in this particular mm, context this is again an sps which is applied to a distributed economy context we also discuss that distributed economy uh, in terms of life cycle so life cycle as we know from our lca uh, lectures that it will consist of pre production production transportation use and disposal phases so when we talk about distributed economy it's not necessarily it has to be distributed on all the life cycle elements it can be but not necessarily so some of the aspects can be distributed so th in this particular chart the outer circle represents distributed the middle circle is for decentralized and the mm, center uh, central circle is for centralized so when we are designing for distributed economy and we are trying to marry the 
sustainable PSS with the distributed economy concept. We can see that across which of these life cycle I am going to be distributed, on which I am going to be decentralized and on which I am going to be centralized. So a combination of it is possible. It is argued that uh, SPSS applied to D has very huge potential for sustainability. Why so? So the rationale behind that is that beyond the limit pollution prevention is not prof profitable or technologically possible. So we need to shift in our economic thinking and we have to revision how do we mm, organize our production chains. So that to happen one needs to question the structure and purpose of our production system and connect it to the unit of satisfaction. So in the context of distributed economy, sustainable development uh, is targeted to be achieved through regional development and as a result it is being mm, argued upon that the sustainability mm, potential of SPSS applied to distributed economy is quite high. So why? Because it can bring in reduction in extensive logistic related activities. If your production happens in a distributed manner, you can reduce the logistics transportation as well as packaging in a big way. The customer and production are more connected. As a result, the possibility that better satisfaction is possible is way much more higher. Also avoidance of activities like restructuring of manufacturing activities and outsourcing these to countries or regions with lower production costs that can be avoided. So keeping the regional development in the region, possibility of value creation connected with regions and culture which can be a very important part of social sustainability. Possibility of using renewable energy, local material resource and manpower. Say because I distribute my production, the scale of production will also reduce. As a result, the possibility that more easily I can use renewable energy sources also grows up. I uh, will be more able to use local material resources which will further reduce my transportation and packaging. And I will also be able to use my local manpower. There is also possibility to empower individuals and community and reduce poverty and inequality through this method. So while we were trying to discuss this, we also came across different configurations for distributed economy. So one concept can be like empire. So empire can be called as a distributed economy with a standalone concept because every household which is interested in generating their own electricity by using solar panel and the services of Empire, they are standalone entities, they are not connected to each other. So I am having distributed energy production happening at each individual house. So this is a distributed configuration in which it is a standalone configuration and you can apply SPSS like Empire has done in this particular context. See if I connect these houses into a network, what the benefit I get in this particular option is excesses produced in one place can be utilized in another place where at that particular moment there is a excess of demand. So as a result the network can better do utilization of resources. Say for example if uh, even it can give you the possibility that rather than each house owning small small units it might also be all the four houses or five houses together owning a bigger unit. Again you can bring in SPSS applied to this network. The sustainability potential over here increases because the resource utilization is more optimal. Also the output generated its usage can become more optimal. Now say I can also have a network of networks. So say for example I have a big uh, biogas plant and that is quite big. This biogas plant is fed by a say a big restaurant or a big hotel and that hotel generates a lot of mm, ways to run this biogas plant. Then there are other biogas plants located in other networks. So if we bring in the 
network aspect from here so there are many networks and which are connected to each other through some uh, more network elements i can ensure way much better utilization of resources as a result the potential for sustainability is quite good in both the systems in the networks as well as network of networks i also ensure that say if one particular household is not generating any waste at a given point of time because all the members are outside all the members have gone out for a vacation i can still ensure that my network survives my network does not collapse because one household or two household is at this moment switched off the third option is this network connected to a centralized unit so say for example i know i can um, use biogas for certain extent or i can use solar energy for certain extent but i'm also connected to the main grids i'm also connected to the lpg pipeline which ensures that uh, a part of my consumption from the main um, grid or from the main lpg power plant is offset by this more renewable energy sources me as a customer it saves my money and it's also very good for the environment again you can also have spss model designed for this particular context you might also have situations in which say it is uh, you have a smart grid so if i'm generating lot of solar power i and i'm not using that much of power i might also have the option that i can put back the extra power generated in the system say for example this can also ensure that i don't have to invest huge amounts of money in owning the battery packs in which i would have otherwise have to store all the solar energy which is generated during the day time for usage at night time this ensures that when it is being generated it is supplied to the uh, mains and then uh, proper distribution of the energy is done which is very efficiently done by the mains grid so all these uh, configuration offers spss possibilities and they have mm, uh, varying degrees of sustainability mm, capability so in the context of the spss methodology we discuss certain key tools for sustainability orientation the most important because we are making a systems map so we should always create the systems map consisting of the a list first list of all providers all the stakeholders who are providers all the stakeholders who are customers then we create the energy flow map which will consist of the material flow information flow financial flow and labor performance we have to also highlight what is the partnership of the providers and who is going to be the owner of the product we write down what is flowing between them and we can also put them a sequence like 1 2 3 4 so that for anybody who wants to read this particular map is easy for them we have to create the systems map at different levels so at the starting of the project when we are doing the existing map when we are making system concepts so for each of those system concepts for our final design we have to also make systems map for our best case sustainability uh, cases then we are talking about exploring customer needs very important we have to do the market definition how do i do my market definition is i first put my market definition okay so for fresh water as a pss then what all is included inside it and what all is not included outside it once i have done that another very very important step is doing the means and chain, chain analysis where i first try to identify all the abstract attributes required to uh, make my pss a successful pss i convert those abstract attributes into concrete attributes so concrete attributes are nothing but technical specifications it will define your concept in terms of say for example the solar panel should generate um, energy for energy equivalent to 250 watts per hour so that is a concrete attribute from the abstract attribute we define the functional consequences then the psychosocial consequences from it arises the instrumental values and finally the terminal value 
we try to map out all those interactions which are important for having the sustainability built in in interaction storyboard we expand our scope of the pss by using the satisfaction system map so this was my first scope then i see where all i can apply it what can be my further extended scope so i extend my scope and i see which all stakeholders so here you can see all these stakeholders they remain the same irrespective of what system what satisfaction system i am talking about and there are certain specific which are applicable only to the given subsystems by using this we can expand the scope of our spss you can also use the pss innovation matrix to identify the unmet invisible needs and not served invisible customer needs and see if you can design products over here which will ensure a possible greater success also better immunity from the competitors for a little longer time frame we also spoke about the polarity diagram as one of the very key mm, important diagram because it helps you to think in terms of polarities and that to polarities which are cross to each other it further helps me to widen the number of ideas that i have it also helps me in mm, greater gran granularity i can analyze my ideas and see okay if it has certain kind of mm, drawbacks sustainability related drawbacks or feasibility related drawbacks how can i improve it further then we spoke about that we should uh, define our core functionalities basic functionalities added value functionalities and sub functionalities that helps us to understand what the uh, uh, spss is going to offer then we try to understand its feasibility technological feasibility and then in terms of implementation then again we cross this aspect with the sustainability potential so we would like to have all those concepts all those ideas taken forward in which case the sustainability potential is high so the sustainability is potential is high and also feasibility potential is high they are ideally the best solutions solutions which will lie say somewhere over here feasibility is low but sustainability is high we can strategize how can we increase their feasibility if at all possible maybe in terms of time frames maybe in terms of resources we also spoke about uh, creating the stakeholder motivation matrix because so we are talking about motivation contribution uh, made contribution received and synergy of all actors involved because only when we have clearly designed and defined all these things for all the stakeholders involved we can ensure mm, greater chances of in the success of the spss once we were done with this particular mm, methodology we went into discussion of sustainable tools from other disciplines so now we will try to see how these tools for sustainability are actually created and say for example you come across a design scenario which is quite different from all the context that we have designed you will still need certain kind of tools so when we are doing a summary of sustainability tools from other disciplines that's what we will try to discuss like if you come up with a completely new scenario or you come up with a hybrid scenario so you say you want to do an spss design for the agricultural field how you can modify your tools or how you can marry your tools what can be your strategy so let's start with architecture so when we were looking through the tools for architecture we saw that because architecture can be at different scales they can be at the scales of say new buildings existing buildings green homes as big as residential societies they can be even more, more complicated like factory buildings they can be something like villages green cities townships so in terms of architecture all these are very different in terms of scale complexity their requirements and so on and hence 
in this particular domain there have been specific tools designed which can help in assessment of the uh, particular context in hand so say for example with green villages what we discussed is they have these uh, following criteria health and hygiene now we are talking about a village so health and hygiene village infrastructure water conservation energy availability and efficiency materials and resources social and community actions you can see that uh, all the three dimensions we are trying to touch upon them by all these aspects all the three dimensions of um, uh, sustainability and at the same time we are trying to modify our um, uh, criteria or guidelines for doing the same as per what it might be uh, more contextual for a village when i say health and hygiene i can way much more easily understand the um, uh, social dimension in terms of health and hygiene rather than keeping it as broad as social then uh, green innovation so uh, again various weightages are given to each of these uh, dimensions so say you can see that the health and hygiene has 20 per 7% weightages so many researchers have worked together and come up with these uh, weightages we also discussed that we took two of the existing uh, uh, matrices from the field of architecture so we took the griha version 2015 for new construction and lead version 4 for new construction and we tried to compare them on the sustainable development criteria which is the three criteria that you have environment social and economic to see which of these uh, sub points cater to the requirements of environmental social or economic when we were doing this comparison we identified that griha is very strong its criteria is quite elaborate on the environmental dimension but it lacks criteria on the social and economic dimension so that's where we have a potential for improving the metrics in itself so if you keep the basic idea of sustainable development on three dimensions you take that criteria to a given context you all you have to do is how do i mm, re word all those uh, mm, criteria involved which are more contextual to the given context so say for example in the context of uh, architecture new building site selection low impact design design to mitigate urban heat island effect site impervious factor they are very important and they are contextual to a mm, building again coming to the domain of agriculture and sustainability we discussed couple of mm, tools like safa rice and kosa and ksnl again we saw each tool they first try to define what is their scope of work so say for example safa it does not access products or processes but it accesses enterprises hence you can see first what they do is they define the enterprise scope so this is one enterprise this is another enterprise so first the, the uh, given sustainability assessment or given sustainability uh, orienting design tool will first set the boundary what it is meant for then within the boundary it will try to see how i can modify the three dimensions of sustainability say for example in this case because i am talking about enterprises so i have my domain environment economy and social but because it's about uh, organization i am bringing in governance because that's what is important for a organization so you can see i have corporate ethics i have accountability participation rule of law holistic management also we might have to mm, refine the words for environment so in this case because i am in the context of agriculture i am defining environment as atmosphere water land materials and energy biodiversity animal welfare so mm, mm, the first define the context then define the boundary that you will be taking into consideration then take the three dimensions and elaborate the three dimensions in the context of your boundary coming to that of the cities and communities in the cities and communities it was identified that it is very important to understand social sustainability because all cities all urban settlements they are about uh, 
large number of people coming together and uh, trying to achieve certain uh, things. So it's the social interaction with the environment, social interaction with the economy, social interaction with the culture. So it's in the context of social. Hence, the circles of sustainability, because they are concerned about cities and urban, uh, urban settlements, they took the guiding principle as socially sustainable outcomes. And as a result, they came up with four key questions related to four circles, which are the profile circles, which are nothing but an elaboration of so the profile circles and are an elaboration of the three dimensions of sustainability in the context of cities and urban settlements with the social sustainability outcome as the main uh, aspect in mind. So here you can see when I am talking about the dimension of ecology as we had dis discussed it's the uh, it's in the interaction of the human element with and within the ecology with materials energy water air and so on since the social is very important it has also been divided into two aspects the politics and the culture in order to get way much better granularity of this uh, picture because we have so many tools already available and so many dimensions, so many sub dimensions already available. So, in case you have to come up with uh, altogether new kind of dimensions which are more suitable for your project, a good approach can also be like you sit with all the dimensions that we have discussed and for your given context you pick up the ones which will be more applicable to um, your context. Because in, uh, so uh, when we are talking about the sustainability tools, there are two types of tools. There are design tools and there are assessment tools. So whenever there is a, uh, only an assessment tool, so it, hel it helps you to do just assessment. But since the circles of sustainability is also a design tool, it is a design plus assessment tool, so it also consists of the process circle which tells you if you have to go through the whole mm, process of creating mm, sustainable cities and communities you can take up this process. So the MSDS method was a design method similarly the circles for sustainability is also a design method. A design method will of course always have an assessment component into it because both of them are design methods so they consist of processes so if you think of the processes that were involved in the uh, msds method the strategic analysis related processes the exploring opportunities related processes similarly we have processes over here which are customized to the requirements that one has for the context of cities or urban settlements because it is about cities and urban settlements and we need to bring in a large number of stakeholders so they also have this engagement circles which helps to understand how to build in uh, engagement with different kinds of entities. So with civil entities uh, there are four different types of civil en entities similarly research based entities there are also four types government institutions and business organizations. When they are divided into four types, the aim was to cover as many typologies as possible. Finally comes the knowledge circle because uh, in order to have a social uh, sustainability, socially oriented sustainability tool, you have to also know how people learn things, how people uh, make meaning out of things and it is in those learning processes and meaning that using them you can build in sustainability. Hence, this tool also has something which is called as the knowledge circles which tries to identify how people learn, how people build, build up their knowledge, how people make meanings. So again four parameters on the basis of feelings, on the basis of pragmatics, on the basis of reflection and on the basis of reflexivity. 
so that was all about the tools which are more holistic in nature now let's come to tools which are more environmentally oriented more oriented towards the lca related approach so in our lecture on carbon trading we try to understand what how the life cycle assessment has been commercialized in a particular manner so in carbon trading we learned about concepts related to carbon credits carbon footprint clean development mechanism carbon trade exchange and carbon neutral organizations so in this particular concept we realized that there can be way many more scopes of making of making commerce out of aspects related to sustainability so that brings us to the end of this particular course hope you had a good journey learning about the different concepts of sustainability and you will be able to apply in all that you do to certain extent some of these concepts that have been discussed in this particular course thank you so much